Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm going to be reacting to Alan Watts, Fu uh, Fundamentals of Buddhism Fundamentals of Buddhism and Hinduism. So this was requested. I do request. If you have a request, please leave it in the comments below. Please leave the title of the video, the YouTube channel, and the length. You can put a link, but, a link, but um, it might get put and held for review because I guess people promote their channels. But uh, guaranteed for me to find it if you just title, uh, YouTube channel, and the uh, length of it so I know exactly which one. So anyways, um, I guess I was kind of requesting a lot of Buddhism, not necessarily requesting a lot, but that's the thing that I, so far I want to kind of learn because it seems to be a little bit more along the lines of what I, well for one, started with in terms of uh, Eastern philosophy or Hinduism and the fact that it kind of had an impact on me whenever I took world, world religion class. They, they talked about Buddhism, I don't know what else they talked about because that's the only thing that stuck with me. That's the one that just had a, great, a really great impact on me, even though it's just a, just a few words that was said. I can't remember everything else about it. It's been a long time. So anyways, let's go to get started. Now then, we have to get on to Buddhism. And in order to introduce Buddhism, it's necessary to remember the whole background of the world view of India. Uh, in other words, what we're going to study, first of all, to understand Buddhism, is Indian cosmology, just as you would have to study the cosmology of the Ptolemaic view of the world in order to understand Dante, and in order to understand lots of things about medieval Christianity. So the, the, the cosmology of the Hindus, their view of the universe, has come right into Japanese life through Buddhism, but it antedates Buddhism. Buddhism simply adopted it as a matter of course, just as now if you invented a new religion, you would probably adopt the cosmology of modern astronomy. astronomy. Well, now, how does the Hindu see the world? You know there are really three great views of the world that human beings have had. And they go, uh, one is, is the Western view of the world, which looks upon the world as a construct, an artifact, by analogy with ceramics and carpentry. Then there is the Hindu view of the world which is dramatic. Everything's an illusion. Looks on it as a play. <laughs> and then the Chinese view which is organic and looks upon the world as an organism, a body. But the Hindu view sees it as a drama. And it's simply this, there is what there is and always was and always will be which is called the self. Uh, that in Sanskrit is Atman, A-T-M-A-N. And the Atman is also called Brahman. Brahman from the root Bri, to grow, to expand, to <coughs> swell. Uh, is uh, at actually related to our word breath. Uh, so, Brahman, the self, according to the Hindu view, plays hide-and-seek with itself for always and always and always. <laughs> the way he worded that, uh, plays hide-and-seek with itself, that could be confusion to a Westerner. It was a little bit confusing at first for me and then I understood what he meant. Because it is the idea that who we are in terms of Hinduism and as far as I can uh, I understand it who we are our true selves it's not this body it's not the mind it's the I can't remember now like consciousness I, I can't remember if that's the who are we who we are in terms of Hinduism but ultimately the Atman is who we truly are this big consciousness and we're all just fragments of this consciousness we think that we are individuals, but in reality, everything that we are is a figment of this consciousness. Who we truly are is this massive consciousness. Well, I mean, that's about it. I just remember about to repeat myself there, but yes. Who we truly are is this one, one consciousness. All of us that are individuals, who we think that are individuals, is, and as a matter of fact, is this one consciousness. We just think we're separate from it, but in reality, we're all the same. That makes the eggs... Uh, the egg video that I reacted to understandably more because in that one it says oh you're every single one of them throughout the entirety of history of mankind you're all of these people which 
I think I understood a little bit of it. It was a bit odd. It's like, how is that possible? But I think I understood a little bit. But now I understand more of it as, again, I watch more uh, wisdom videos, as I call it. How far out, how lost can you get? So here, each one of us, according to the Hindu idea, is the Godhead on purpose getting lost for the fun of it. And how terrible it can get at times. But won't it be nice when you wake up? That's sort of the basic idea. And I found it's an idea that any child can understand. It has great simplicity and great elegance. Ooh, hold on, let me go back. And plus, I, I forgot, I forgot to explain. And saying hide and seek as though it is literally hiding from us and it's not its not the same as us. So a Westerner might think it's this other separate object from us that's showing itself but we don't realize it and it's not us but something else, the duality. A child can understand. Now that one, I definitely got to hear that again because I would say Westerners would definitely, people who don't watch or understand East, Hindu, Hindu, Hinduism in general, I had a difficulty understanding that. It made no sense to me. That any child can understand. It Oops, great, on. That's sort of the basic idea. Yeah, and how terrible it can get at times. But won't it be nice when you wake <clears> up? That's sort of the basic idea. And I found it's an idea that any child can understand. It has great simplicity and great elegance. Now, in part of this cosmology, we must understand another feature of this conception of the universe. Not only, uh, you remember now the Kalpas, the periods of time, the Yugas, the qualities of the time through which the universe goes, but there's the final thing, which are called the six worlds or the six paths of life. And this is a very important for Buddhism, although it comes from Hinduism, is represented in what is called the Bhava Chakra. Bhava means becoming, B-H-A-V-A, -A. Chakra, C-H-A-K-R-A, means wheel. The wheel of becoming, the wheel of birth and death. And it has six divisions. It has the top people and the bottom people. The top people are called Deva, D-E-V-A. The bottom people are called Naraka, N-A-R-A-K-A. -A. Devas are angels, and they are the people who are the supreme spiritual successes. The Naraka are tormented in purgatory, and they are the supreme spiritual failures. Oh, so the heaven and hell kind of theory, I guess. They are the poles, the happiest people and the saddest people. Then in between there comes the world of the pretas, next to the naraka, next to the purgatory. The pretas are the frustrated spirits who have tiny mouths and enormous bellies, huge <laughs> appetites, but very, very limited means of satisfying it. Oh, that's terrible. Then next, they come between the Narakas and the Devas at the top. Next up from the Pretas are the human beings. And they are supposed to hold a middle position in the six worlds. Then you go up from the human... Wait, so we're the third from the bottom? ...beings to the Devas, and then you start coming down again. The next world is called the Ashura. And those are the wrathful spirits, the personifications of storm and all the anger and violence of nature. Next down is animals, coming between the Ashura and the Purgatories again. Oh crap, I am lost. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to rewind that, because he, he started at the very top, the angels, then the bottom, the, the tormented, and then I thought he went up from there, then up there, but it didn't sound like it, he did that. Because then the animals would be above us. Okay. Then you go up from the human beings to the devas, and then you... Okay, hold on. ...supposed to hold a middle position. <clears throat> then next, they come between the narakas and the devas at the top. Next up from the pretas are the human beings. Okay, so... The, the tormented... I'm sorry, the purgatory... Or not purgatory... Basically hell, and then those who cannot be satisfied, and then right above them is the humans. 
and they are supposed to hold a middle position in the six so, worlds. Then you go up from the human. Okay, so uh, the I'm sorry, I'm terrible with the names, but I understand the concept. So the one that's in constant torment, the one with the small mouths and big stomachs. Then above them is the humans, as far as I can tell. Now we're going above the humans, going up one level. Human beings to the devas, and then you start devas. coming down again. The so next world is called again. the Ashura, and those are the wrathful spirits, the personifications of storm and all the anger and violence of nature. So you go up, then you go back down? And this would make sense if you go back down again, where the animals are in the same line with these, or or is there another two that... Sorry, if it goes like that, where this is the tormentor, this is the little mouse and big stomach, this is the human, yeah, this is the human, these are the the one above the humans, I can't remember, then these two that he's talking about, the animals, and then the one above the humans. That would make six worlds. Next down is animals, coming between the Ashura and the Purgatories again. Now all these needn't be taken literally. They are different modalities of the human mind. We are in the Naraka world when we are frustrated and in torment. When mm. we are merely chronically frustrated, we are in the Preta world. When we are in a state of equanimity, even-mindedness, we are in the human world. When we are deliriously happy, we are in the Deva world. When we are furious, we are in the Ashura world. And when we are dumb, we are in the animal world. <laughs> so these are all modalities. Dumb. And it would be said now, this is terribly important to understand Buddhism. Because the better you get, the more you go up to the Deva world. The worse you get, the more you go down to the Naraka world. But everything that goes up has to come down. So you can't improve yourself indefinitely. If you improve yourself beyond a certain limit, you simply start to get worse. Like when you make a knife too sharp, it begins to wear away. Hmm. I didn't hear that. So the Buddhahood or liberation, enlightenment, is on no place on the wheel. Huh. Unless it might be the center. By ascending, by becoming better, you tie yourself to the wheel by gold chains. By retrogressing and becoming worse, you tie yourself to the wheel with iron chains. But the Buddha is one who gets rid of the chains altogether. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so this will explain why Buddhism, unlike Judaism and unlike Christianity, is not very, very frantically concerned with being good. It is concerned with being wise. It is concerned with being compassionate, which is a little different from being good. With having tremendous sympathy and understanding and respect for all the ignorant people who don't know that they're it, but who are playing the very far out game of being you and I. And so this is why every Hindu greets his brother, not by shaking hands, but by putting his hands together and bowing. And this is why the Japanese bow to each other, basically. This is why Buddhist rituals are full of the bowing gesture, because you are honoring the self, playing the roles of all the people around you. And all the more honor is due when the self has forgotten what it's doing. I, that little that little whatever facial thing I did it was a realization of the bowing of the self and the fact that when this is bowing of the self when you're bound to some when you're bowing to someone else you're bowing to yourself because well we're all in Atman or Brahman and is therefore in a very far out situation now that is the basic Hindu view of the world. That's the, that's the cosmology which goes along with Buddhism. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, there's no way to explain Hinduism in such a short time. You definitely have to watch multiple videos to understand it, absolutely. Uh, a lot of the things he said 
if I didn't know, um, if I didn't watch all these other wisdom videos, like wisdom videos, um, I would not understand what he's saying as a, a Westerner. Uh, I, whenever, I, whenever I watch videos, I try to think of what I knew prior to whatever I know now at a certain point and what I know now. So for example, when I watch wisdom videos, I try to think of a time where I don't, I didn't watch any wisdom videos prior to my wisdom videos watching. I would remember what my mindset was at that point and then react to the video in that sense. And then at the same time, uh, the current mindset that I have, the knowledge that I've obtained and react to the video at the same time. That's the reason why I, I try to, I try to have, I try to view everything in as many different ways as I can possible. So, wisdom videos, so my knowledge prior to the wisdom videos and my knowledge after watching all the wisdom videos that I've obtained. And I have those two mindsets. Those are only two points so far. There's no one in between because there's just either you know it all or, or everything that you've known or that you haven't known prior to the videos. But yeah. So Alan Watts, I've never heard of this person, the fundamentals of Buddhism and Hinduism. I'm trying to think, did he do a good job in that? I, I mean, it's it's really hard to, I'm assuming even to do the fundamentals of Buddhism or Hinduism in eight minutes, but I understood what he said. I think it is going to be very difficult for Western Westerners or anyone who didn't study Hinduism. If this is their first video, it, it was, I don't know if it'd be a very good one. But it would be one that would have to watch. Much like all wisdom videos, you cannot just watch one and understand it. There's just, in my opinion, no way. If you understood it the first time around, I question that. <laughs> but anyways, that's my reaction to Alan Watts' Fundamentals of Buddhism and Hinduism. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.